All right, guys. So it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I, I, I don't often do uh, speaking engagements. It's usually a panel. Uh, so this is a new format. But um, this doesn't work. Uh, yes. No. Step. Choke it. What? Oh, all right. Cool. All right. Guys. I don't do this, uh, but it's, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I just want to thank Creative Mornings and uh, Old School Square uh, for having me. It's, it's uh, telling your story um, is one of the most um, uh, sacred and honored uh, thing to do for me. I think for all of us, that's, uh, that's my intention going back many years ago uh, via coffee, is creating a space for people to feel known and heard. It doesn't matter um, your position of power, uh, your wealth, your accolades, every single one of us, those all fade away, um, but every single person uh, really needs to be heard. Uh, and for their story uh, to continue. And um, so this is cool. But Yulia kind of beat me to it. I want to hear about why you're here. Because I know, again, if you're a small business owner, or it doesn't matter, any job, 8.30 on a Friday for two hours is a significant Commitment, right? It's got to be worth something. So, so why are you here? Like two or three? Coffee. <laughs> Coffee, as simple as that, man. You can just go right down to, to any of the shops. Yeah. All right. Connection. Connection. Cool. What she said. All right. <laughs> Last one. Anyone? Inspiration. I got none of that for you. <laughs> Zero. Um, well, let me let me uh, pop out pop out my notes here. Uh, and I'm not I'm not one for for uh, lots of slides. It's just not my. Oh, that's Julia's. Um, I'm not one to kind of fill your your mind with media and distraction. I think that's one thing uh, that I. I feel like we're, we're moving further away from um, is we just want to be entertained and we want glitzy things, but we're, we're losing this ability to be present in the moment. And that's what today is about the intention. But before I get into all that, um, let me tell you about my story. Uh, I grew up in Massachusetts. I came from a family of ministers. So my great grandfather, my grandfather, my father, my uncle, Two of my cousins are all preachers. And um, so that was my culture. It was in the country, it was Pentecostal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Uh, yeah, so it was great. I mean, that, that's, that's all I knew. But when you have a long line of, of uh, ministers in your family, it's they're, they're like, you're next. And uh, so, so as a kid, I, I was like, okay, this is, this is what, this is, I guess, what I'm going to do. I love people. And when I was 12 years old, there was this, he was 6'4", 330-pound black guy in our congregation. And I really, um, I really love this guy. He turned me on to hip-hop, and I was like, little white kid. I was like, this is, this music is so good. Uh, but he was just a massive guy, and he had huge hands. And he put it on top of my head uh, when I was 12, and he's like, boy, the Lord told me that you're gonna reach thousands of people over your lifetime. And, uh, and like a 12 year old, you're like, thousands of people? From Dean? Oh, like that's heavy. Uh, that's heavy. So fast forward uh, into my early uh, adult life after I graduated college. And I, I still wasn't sure about that. I was like, I, I just don't feel 
uh, that that's, that's my calling in life. Um, and so I was at PBA at the time, and we had no coffee shops. We had uh, Starbucks and Barnes and & Noble and City Place. City Place opened, I think, 2001, and that's, that's where I hung out. Uh, so there was no space. There was no uh, like community space in West Palm. And so I was like, I'm, I think I'm going to do that. So I wrote my first business plan for a coffee shop when I was a senior at PBA. And um, I was playing music at the time. Did, I had zero dollars still in a coffee shop. So you get all caught up in like the grand the grand vision of what you could do. And then you're like, oh, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Probably can't do that. So I was working, playing music. Uh, we ended up touring and I was like, oh, this is, this is what I'm supposed to do. Um, I can, this is thousands of people. So through music, okay, this is it. Uh, my wife was with me on the road with the band and we, uh, you know, she loved it. But I told her, I made the commitment to her that I would never leave her home. Um, and in music, that's very difficult. Usually the spouses stay home, especially when you're, when you're a starting band. Record labels don't, don't really subsidize much of your life. Um, so three quarters of the way through, through its war, the label said, we're gonna stop uh, subsidizing the lives on the road. So two weeks later, I was out. I, I made that commitment to her. And so my life made an abrupt turn. And I was like, oh, well, that's over, and I still have no money, and I'm 27 years old. Um, this is awesome. Uh, no resume, you know, like, hey, I'm a musician. You want to hire me? Well, like, a lot of skills. Um, and so uh, went to Nashville and, and just hung out for six weeks and tried to figure out um, what I should do. Ended up teaching randomly. Fast forward three years later, my brother called me and he's like, hey man, I know you wanted to open a coffee shop and he was in uh, DC at the time. I was like, yeah. He said, well, I have, a, I have a corner in the gallery. So if you want to come up, um, you want to do it? Six weeks later, I had the wife and we went up there and I'm building my bar and every ounce of income that we had, every nail was counted, um, super stressful. My wife was a mess. She's like, why are we doing this? Like, I worked at Starbucks. People don't treat you well. Like, you're, this is not gonna be fun. We're in, so we're in, just outside of DC, and where the coffee shop was, it was uh, in a development with Upstairs was eight floors of IBM working on a Homeland Security project. Across the street was six floors of corporate attorneys. Um, the next building over was four venture capital firms. I mean like high level people. And I'm trying to convince her that they're gonna be receptive to us and treat us like really solid human beings. <laughs> and she didn't buy it. Um, but I was like the intention, so our intention is true, right? And then, let, me, let me pause the story for a second. So I think it's really important um, when you're identifying your intention um, that you hold on to it no matter the circumstance or, or the reward. It is true. A lot of people use intention to manipulate. They use it to manipulate, to profit. So I'm coming out of intention this morning in its, in its pure sense, transparent, truth. I should probably start my, my uh, there, we'll skip right past that. <laughs> so this is, this is what intention is to me, like these kind of these foundational things. I, so know that. It's a very nuanced, like most things in life, uh, intention, you can come out from much different angles. But the most fulfilling and honest way is based on these four things, which equals um, a good human. And so I, t I told Nat, I said, uh, I, I believe that if we do this, that it's going to resonate. Um, 
I was, I was 30 years old at the time. Um, and three months into it, I, I, I figured out, okay, this is, this, is, um, this is real. So my intention of making people feel known, creating that space every day over three minutes um, is powerful. And it was. I had, um, I can't figure this mic out. That's why I serve coffee. Um, but so the head of security for Homeland Security took me out for three hours, told me way too much. Why? Because he couldn't talk to anyone. And so I was the guy he chose to talk to. The head of adventure, yeah, it's crazy. I'm pretty sure his clearance level would have been revoked after the things he told me. But it was awesome. And I love that. Um, and then another CEO for a venture, cap venture capital firm came in before I was opening, knocking on the door, and he had to let go of 10 people that day, and he wanted my advice. And I was like, babe, this is what I'm talking about. Like, 225, 12 ounces at a time, banana bread, this speaks to people. This is powerful. This is how culture changes. So very quickly, um, she, she bought into it. She's like, okay, I get it. And there was great sacrifice. So I think intention, um, like, like most things in life, it, if, it's, if it's real, there's going to be a, a dramatic cost um, to it. That first year, I, uh, I made a whopping $20,000. I can pay a lot of bills with that. A lot of bills, um, but it was great. So two years went by. Anyway, I came down here, and now we're subculture. I better speed this up. I think we're like 12 minutes in. Um, but the same thing, I, I, we came to a crossroads, and Rodney Mayo, I don't know if you guys know who he is. Um, I, he I heard about him, and our lease was up. And um, at the time, we were just a small coffee shop on Clematis called Habitat, Habitat Coffee. And... Um, and he, he wanted to open a coffee shop, so I sent him an email. I was like, hey dude, um, I love your concepts. How about we meet, because I'm gonna switch spaces. And I was told, it was BS. I was like, this dude is gonna crush me if he opens a coffee shop. He's gonna crush me because he has money, he has a following, and I'm just a dude. So I, I believe my intention, but I'm gonna be broke if he does this. So we met, uh, and the guy didn't say a word. The whole first meeting. And if you know Rodney, he had his sunglasses on, his hat on, and he's just sitting there. And I'm talking at him for, for like an hour. And I'm just, all these things about why it'd be good, and this is what. And at the end, I was like, man, do you want a coffee war? <laughs> yeah, it was great. That was great. So I was like, I, I pretty much blew that. Um, but five meetings later, I think what. What Rodney and I have found in each other is um, we're both doing different things, but together our intention is exponentially greater. His resources, uh, the vision, what we want to do um, has been massively impactful. And it's, it's really cool to see how it's, it's resonated um, with the community. But the one thing that, that uh, or the first thing that I want to and I'll be quick, don't, don't freak out ladies. Um, recognize and align in all things. I think this is, this is the, the, the really crucial part with intention, and even with coffee, is that it's not a piece of your story. It's not a piece of your vision. It's like a pillar. It's foundational. And it has to be consistent, otherwise you're, you're gonna be all over the map. You're gonna be fragmented. And so I think that's, that's one thing that it's, it's very difficult to identify and it took me till I was 30, I feel like, to really get there. But when I look back, I was like, oh, this is consistent in my life. These, all these decisions were consistent, and they align uh, with, with who I am and what I, what I see. Um, and the second thing, I originally talked before about we're just kind of all over the place, you know, our... It's like, we're intentional for this, this month. And we're like, oh, cool, that was, all right. 
and, were, and we were, we're over here, and now it's this, and this is my vision. And then I'm gonna, I'm, I'm like really into this community. No, I'm not, because it didn't pan out. So like we, but, but we call it intention. Intention's a long game. Intention is not, like those experiences, sure, it's a cheap intention. And I don't mean to like beat anybody up, but those, those aren't, those aren't, uh, those are kind of like quick passions, but it's, it's not intention. Like intention is that commitment over, over years. Could be over a lifetime or a season. And I think that's, that's really important in our culture to recognize that is to, is to slow yourself and don't be distracted and keep going back. Keep going back to that. The third, and this is kind of what I, I touched on with my story, is your intention, don't let it be swayed by your success or failure. Because I'll tell you one thing, those first three months, um, no, over nine years ago, when I first opened the coffee shop, those first three months were just as good as the past three months of my life with three coffee shops. And you know, all of a sudden you get a seat at the table when you're successful as a businessman. I'm like, I've been saying the same stuff for nine years. But all of a sudden, because I have these businesses, my words are worth more. That's just life, but that's okay. But inside, I'm no happier. Why? Because my intention was about creating space for you and for you and for you and continuing your story one by one. It's not about, oh, I, need, I need a thousand people to like, for it to resonate with. And so that, that's a really powerful thing in your life and it creates that, that long-term focus when you don't let success or failure sway what your intention is. Um, so to wrap it up, <laughs> right? I can, I can, I can barely see it. It's really hard with these lights. So I'm, I'm keying in on over there. Um, but how many of you feel as if you have, and you, you don't have to raise your hand, but do you have an intention for your life? And you're like, man, that's a lot. <laughs> and I get it. I get it. Um, but it's crucial. It really is crucial. So my mom, I'm going to end with, this was one of the things that really solidified and kind of changed, um, changed my thought process. My mom died. Um, <laughs> my mom died. Uh, sorry, it's like those small things I can never remember. I'm a squirrel, you know, it's like, uh, but my mom died, um, she had cancer. She died over two years ago, and I sent the doctor a thank you note after she passed, and I just said, hey man, you're, like, what you did um, for her, just how you were, it was, it was beyond what you needed to do, how you showed up for her. And I said, I don't really understand how you do it. You know, you deal with cancer patients all the time, they die a lot, because um, he, he dealt with the ones that were terminal mostly. And he, he said, it's not about saving lives, it's about giving people time, and I can do that for every single one. And I was that like, I was like, whoa, whoa, I get it. I totally get that now. And in that moment, uh, three years ago, two years ago, um, really, really put in place what it means to me. So... Thank you for listening this morning. I want to wrap it up. Um, but it's been great. And I, and I hope that you guys, uh, in your own lives, um, feel that peace and that contentment in all things. I wish that for you. I pray that for you. And um, it's been an honor. <laughs>